prefix is ve, and then the verb comes after that. Uh, now that's different from this because it's not an independent word. So the subjects, the, the, the prefix part it is, is independent of the independent words, if that makes any sense. I do something to you is ka, which I write that way, qa. It means I do something to you. Neither of this means I or you all by itself together. It means I do something to you. So all the, all the prefixes work like that. Uh, if, if he does something to her or she does something to him, then there's no prefix at all. So the absence of a prefix is meaningful as well, and so forth. Uh, for an imperative, a command, do it. Uh, do it to him, do it to it, do it to her, is ye. I had to make decisions about are there going to be tenses, are there going to be plurals, and all that stuff. So I just, I just arbitrarily made these decisions. And what I did as I was going along doing it is, is I made notes. I wrote it down. I kept track of what I was doing. So every time a new sentence would come along in the script, I'd say, OK, there's a plural there. How did I do plural before? Do it the same way, and so on. Kept track, kept track, kept track. Every once in a while, doing that would lead to something that I didn't like. I said, oh, this is crummy. I'm following my own rules, but it's crummy. That's OK. No one has ever heard this language before. I can change it, as long as I change it everywhere in the same way. So the thing was changing as I was going along, too. And eventually what I did is I came up with Klingon translations for all the lines of dialogue in the film, where it said the character spoke the line in Klingon. And I had to write them out phonetically so that the actors could learn the lines. And in addition to writing them out phonetically, I also uh, made tapes, like Berlitz language learning tapes, for the actors so that they could listen to them and learn their lines. And the actors actually told me afterwards that they took their little cassette tapes and put them in their car cassette players and would drive down the Hollywood freeway practicing speaking Klingon and hopefully avoiding accidents. I went to Hollywood and I was on the set most of the time when the actors were speaking Klingon. Not 100% of the time. There's a few lines that they did before I got there and a few lines I did after I left. But most of the time, I was there. So I would work with the actors every day and practice the lines and say the lines and so forth. Uh, the main speaker of Klingon in this film is Christopher Lloyd, who plays Krug. And every day, we would sit down in the morning and go over the lines for that day. And just before each take, we would rehearse the lines back and forth and get it right. And he was very enthusiastic and, and, and you know, really wanted to get it right. And he did, a, he did an incredible job. My sort of role model of what Klingon sounds like is Christopher Lloyd saying it, because he was my first big speaker. Uh, and in the course of the filming, it was very interesting, because at the end of every take in, a, in, in making any film, the director yells cut and checks with the, with the camera guy, was that OK for you? Checks with the sound guy, was that OK for you? But in this case, he would also check with me. Leonard Nimoy would check with me. Was the, was the Klingon OK? And if it sounded OK, I'd say yes. And if it didn't sound OK, because someone said the wrong thing, left a syllable out, changed the vowel or something, I'd say no. Well, I learned very quickly not to say no very often. And we only redid it for the Klingon if something, something was really, really sounded funny. And a couple of times, Leonard himself would reshoot the scene because the Klingon sounded funny to him. Because he got picked up an ear for the language as well. And at one time, someone said a line uh, which after it was said, Leonard said, no, 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 that sounds too much like French. And he was right, because Klingon is very sort of choppy. Uh, the, 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 uh, the, a line like, jonta, jonta is, is the, the engine uh, of the ship. But if you, say, you don't say jonta, jonta, it's jonta. It has to be choppy like that. And, and if it's said wrong, it doesn't sound like Klingon. But most of the time, we, we would let it go. Now, if the actor said it, in a way different from what I had intended, but it still sounded like good, Kling, like good Klingon, I'd say, OK. And I'd make a note to myself, OK, I wanted him to say tu, but he said to. I would change my little dictionary. So from now on, that word became to. That became the correct way to do it. Sometimes, it wasn't, it, it's not only the sounds of the language that got changed as a result of the, of the actors getting the line wrong or something like that, or not remembering correctly. Sometimes the grammar itself changed. Uh, so, for example, there's, there's, a, there's a scene in the film where Commander Krug says, kill one of them, I don't care which one. All right, now, the way you say that in Klingon, or the way that I had devised to say that in Klingon, is kill one of them, the object comes first, so the first thing is one, what? 
means one. And then the command, kill. Okay, there's a little prefix, ye, that tells you it's a command. And the word for kill is hoch, which I write this way. The big, the big H's is the ch sound. So, wa, ye hoch, kill one of them. One imperative, kill. I don't care which one. Weich, uh, Weich. That means somebody, anybody. Then I don't care. 